Hello and welcome to my channel. If you haven't already seen it, I got to meet Holly Black and that is a video you should absolutely check out. But what we are here to talk about today is the Wicked King. So what I'm gonna do is this is gonna be a spoiler free review. Please don't put any spoilers in the comments. I'm probably am gonna put up another video later that's gonna be a spoiler discussion. But no spoilers for now. I don't want to ruin this book for anyone. So I actually finished the book as I was sitting in the parking lot at the signing. So that was super exciting and super cool. And I mean, you guys really need to check out the, the video about the signing that I posted because it was everything that I dreamed and so much more. So I actually have two copies of the book. I have the Owl Crate exclusive and I have the regular one. This, they're both signed. This one is personalized to me, so I'm keeping it forever and ever and ever. And this right here I showed a little bit more in my video about the signing, but this is the exclusive art print from the tour. So moving on to the book. Oh my gosh, guys, it was incredible. I still haven't decided if I like it more than The Cruel Prince or not, but I do know that I really liked it. As Holly Black says, book one, The Cruel Prince asks what Jude is willing to do to get power. Book two asks, what is she willing to do to keep it? And as we learn in the book, she's willing to do quite a bit to keep it. Jude really comes into her own throughout The Wicked King. We start to see her really develop as someone to be feared. As it says on a lot of the tour stuff, and as is a phrase that is repeated several times throughout the book, you must learn to strike and strike and strike again. In The Wicked King, we see a lot more development. Oh, and by the way, I'm assuming you've read The Cruel Prince. I'm gonna spoil The Cruel Prince. If you haven't read The Cruel Prince, why are you watching this? So in The Wicked King, Jude has to make a lot of decisions. And so do a lot of other characters. We see a lot more of Locke. We see a lot more of Taran. We see a lot more of Vivi and her girlfriend, Heather. Heather goes through a lot in this book. She has to as Vivi's mortal girlfriend, she has to learn about fairy and about how there's so much more to this world than she ever could have understood. One of the things that happens pretty much in the first scene of the book is Locke becomes the master of revels for Cardan, which gives him a lot more power than Jude wants to see him with. And so Jude ends up spending a lot of time trying to figure out how to stop him from having too much power. We also see more of Baelkin, who is currently being imprisoned in the Tower of Forgetting. And there's also another character that I can't talk about right now who shows up in the Tower of Forgetting. And oh goodness, guys, guys. It's just a great book and I feel like it really adds a lot to the series. And like with The Cruel Prince, it ends on a horrible, horrible, horrible cliffhanger. And Holly hasn't even finished The Queen of Nothing yet. That's one of the things she talked about at the signing, is how The Queen of Nothing is not even finished yet. Holly, you need to finish that, please, if you're watching this. I'm begging you. Please. The main villain of this book is Orlo of the Undersea. Orlo is Nikasa's mother. Uh, Nikasa is Cardan's ex-girlfriend. So there's a lot of crazy things going on there. They're trying to create an alliance because their other option is to go to war. But not only is there a threat of war with Orlo of the Undersea, there's a threat of war with several other characters. And I don't want to spoil who it is, but it's sort of predictable and it's sort of not. We get a lot more in this book of Maddox and we start to see kind of what Maddox's whole opinion of everything that's going on is, because Maddox obviously is not very happy that Jude cheated him out of the throne. So Cardan is kind of this puppet king who's starting to kind of want some of his own power, but still leaving most of it to Jude, and Jude is running around trying to control everyone and trying to be the power behind the throne and keeping Roybin and Kai and Maddox and Orlo and Baelkin and Locke and Taran and Grimson and everybody else under control. And then she gets betrayed. And it's not who you think is going to betray her. 
there's not much more I can really say in this video without spoiling The Wicked King. All I can really tell you is, oh my gosh, you guys, you need to read it. So that's my review. Let me know down below if you've read it, but remember, no spoilers. I will have a spoiler video up soon. So let me know down below what you think, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great day. And one last thing before we go. Book three is titled The Queen of Nothing. The entire book you're going to be wondering, how do we go from Jude being where she is to having a book titled The Queen of Nothing? Let me tell you, the very last page, you're gonna go, oh, that's why.